I'm sure you've seen the promos making the rounds and you're getting ready for tonight at 9.30 p.m. We have what we call sacrificing the greens for gold. And it's important that we have that conversation because what's happening to our environment? We have people raping the earth and we've decided to shine light on it and see how we can move the country forward in that direction. First, take a look at this. Some beautiful work by Alfred Okansi, and then we'll have a conversation with Roland Walker, who is head of our assignments desk. Who are the real faces behind illegal mining in Ghana? Galamse ya ye ka ye kenyi na dem ha biyu ha ni chum miyasa imube thirty percent ni moma ye galamse ni na. After the two-year ban on small-scale mining, gains were made. But the illegal small-scale miners, popularly known as Galamse, returned with full force. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. As government renews its fight against illegal mining, TV3's Alfred Okansi goes on an expedition in the Atiwa forest to uncover the levels of devastation. Sacrificing the Greens for Gold, a TV3 exclusive by Alfred Okansi, Tuesday, 8th June 2021 on TV3 and streaming live on Facebook at TV3 Ghana and on 3news.com. That's what will hit your screens at 9.30 p.m. tonight. Roland Walker is head of our assignments desk and he joins me in studio. Ro, thank you very much for coming this oh, morning. I, I like uh, how you put things together this morning. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I was trying to impress. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> no, cookie. S okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. biscuit. You mean biscuit? Right. Do I need biscuit. that? I've forgotten. You know, I'm blushing. So. Ah, okay. I, I can see it. How come... Uh, Sacrificing greens for gold. Yeah. Why that topic? Why that angle? Um, I have to say that, well, when Galamse first became an issue in the John uh, Muhammad administration, mm. all of us were alarmed. Uh, but also we have to be very much assertive and put mm. things into perspective that it was the media that made the clarion call. That's right. And the government came in to support with the establishment of the interministerial committee. Mm. So we had been doing a number of works as journalists. But just about eight months ago, we decided that we wanted to take a critical look at what we're doing. Mm. Um, a, a, one important organization was Arocha Ghana. Oh, that's um, right. They, alongside the citizens of uh, Chebi and Etiwa, who mm. very much want to preserve that forest belt, uh, also helped in many diverse ways, trying to create ways for us to delve deeper into the issues of whether the forest, the fauna, that we can find in the Etiwa forest are being depleted or not. Mm. And so this is a period of um, six to eight months of investigative work, okay. some of which we had re released earlier. But uh, as over the last two months, we decided that we wanted to do a lot of tracking. So mm. at least each week and each month, we will have snippets of information brought to us. Some of us uh, also will be there presently. Okay. And Alfred had led the team. Because if you look at the Etiwa Forest Belt, we have about four river bodies three river or bodies. three river yeah, bodies. Yeah. So it depends also on which side you're talking about. Yeah, so we have the Brim, the Pradinsu, mm. and, and, and many of, of them, which are very integral right. to the very vegetation that the Forest Belt has. Mm. But the concern was, while traditional authorities, the Forestry Commission, and the rest of the uh, local government authorities will tell us that no mining or galamsey activities were taking place deep within the forest, mm. apparently there were. And these investigative works mm. put together are giving us the indication that even just two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we have illegal mining that is taking place in the Etiwa forest. Well, so the gentleman that Alfred spoke with, I mean, on your screens right now, he made a strong point that uh, they do not have the intention of muddying up the waters. They don't have the intention of ruining the beauty of the forests and the rivers. But how do you do that when you're mining? Well, it's, it's a big question because mm. if you look at our minerals and mining art, the, uh, really the remediative action that needs to be taken by any individual organization that mm. will be mined because you're licensed. Right. So you mine sustainably or responsibly. It is the sustainability and the responsibility part 
that were not undertaken adequately. Okay. I would squarely mm. put the blame on not only the Minerals Commission, but the various ministries that are supposed to do the supervision, mm. for which we're coming late in the day to try to combat. Mm. And then also the traditional authorities who jointly give out their resources or their lands for these um, mining to be undertaken. And it means that mm -hmm. they, as individuals, mm. are not mining responsibly. Right. But you would also know that if you take a look at the individuals who are undertaking Galamse or the mining, mm -hmm. you get to ask yourself the question. The generators that are bought, the pumping machines, mm -hmm. the uh, payloaders, the bulldozers, the excavators, mm -hmm. are they in a position to import, whether they are 10,000 US dollars, 100,000 US dollars, 270,000 to about 300,000 US dollar excavators? Mm -hmm. Plainly no. And that is why the Asante Hini also to, mm -hmm. um, uh, rightly put it that for those people who were in that or meeting, are in political leadership mm, mm. and traditional leadership, they know who and who is financing this. And, and which brings me to my next question, where the gentleman said, we're working for our director. It is not us. It goes beyond us. Are we playing the ostrich? Yes, def definitely. And, and uh, Alfred finds out that apparently they are... Um, um, uh, heads of cartels right okay. here in our country, mm. some of whom also are aligned to some of the traditional uh, chieftains or areas I within see. the Chebi enclave, who also apparently are financing these. Some mm. of them are also not indigenous of the area, they're just plain businessmen mm -hmm. taking advantage of the vulnerability of the a smaller traditional holders or authority to be able to check their lands, mm. to take advantage of the illegal mining that is taking place. And this one is deep in the forest. So you have, uh, you look at the radius or the diameter the of the forest, cover. and they are in the, mm. in the middle. So what we decided to do in conjunction with um, Arocha and some mm. of the organizations that we, we decided to work mm -hmm. with is, is to use drones. So okay. you find that we have good, um, well-manned drone footages that will give you an aerial view Okay. Various elevations, mm. whether it's the front, is the back end, as to how these illegal mining activities are undertaken in this piece. Mm. And I tell you that if anybody wants uh, to have a great interest on mm. why mm. our forest resources are being depleted, it is this, sacrificing the greens for gold. Well, but then somebody would raise the question, if we know all these uh, and we're going to be presenting, as the president puts it, hard evidence, uh, and we would want to see some result. What is the motive after we have shown it tonight and repeated on Thursday 9.30 p.m.? What do you hope to see? And as, as the assignment team, we decided that after this is shown, we've mm -hmm. done a number of extensive uh, commentary on this. We are going to present a copy to the mm -hmm. Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. Okay. We are also going to co uh, copy or present a copy to the Minister for Defense mm -hmm. just to show our own commitment towards the course because media needs to collaborate with state agencies to be able to achieve a certain objective. Mm -hmm. And as um, the pieces that we've been doing, this is the first time that we want to make sure that we also take the step. So you find that within the next week or two or three, when we have adequately been able to deal with the subject, we will get officially to the authorities, the minister uh, responsible for lands, the minister also responsible for defense, mm. present them with a copy and let them also help us collaboratively mm. as TV3 News to be able to get to the heart of the, or, or the frontages of this issue mm. and deal with it. Not only that we're saying it should be once and for all, but comprehensively in such a way that it inures to the benefit of those who live along those forest resources of Etiwa, mm. but also for those who are advocating that our vegetative cover should not be depleted as it should be. Well, so then somebody will say, well, we want to chase out um, those who are doing illegal mining in the Atiwa forest and in other forest reserves. But the government itself has given some, if you like, permission for bauxite to be mined in the Tiwa forest. How do you tell people to stop what you are doing? Does it work? Well, we also took a, a look at that because it's something that Arocha and the citizens of Chebi and mm. the rest of the Achem communities are very much interested in. But you also um, get to know that the government works within its own regulations and laws. Mm. And of course, the Minerals and Mining Act is available to guide some of those processes and procedures that mm. are undertaken, the technical way mining is undertaken. And we're told that this will be done sustainably. Uh, this hasn't been done yet. Mm. Uh, so um, we only will have to monitor and advocate that the right things are done 
by the authorities. Mm. And, and so to speak, all these have been dealt with in this comprehensive documentary. I see. Roland, I thank you very much. But what are we to expect this evening? If, if I switch on my TV at 9.30 p.m.? 9.30, you're going to see there? us with titled Sacrificing the Green Vegetative Cover of the Forest We Have Over Tiwa mm. for the gold that is beneath that rich soil. Mm. What you're also going to see great work put together by Alfredo Kansi, the mm. rest of the team mm. that is doing the production as well at TV3 News. And then also with some uh, great assistance from Arocha and the rest of the citizens who are uh, protesting mm. the depletion of the Etiwa forest. Great investigative work that has painstakingly been undertaken between six to eight months and the result you're going to see this evening. And I tell you, nobody has to miss this. If you want to get comprehensive detail about what is happening in the Etiwa forest, mm. I tell you, 9.30 p.m. right here on your screens on TV3, but also TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube is where you have to be. Roland, I thank you very much. Roland Walker is head of our assignments um, desk, is assignment editor here at uh, TV3 Media General. And every Tuesday and Thursday, 9.30 p.m., we'll bring you something that you've never seen anywhere or would never see anywhere before. So uh, anywhere else. So you stay with us. Thank you very much.